If you decide to work in cybersecurity, you will quickly be faced with the decision of whether to be an ethical hacker, which we sometimes refer to as red team, where you try to break into companies to help them find all the vulnerabilities that hackers can exploit. Or you become a cyber analyst, where you analyze and respond to hackers and cyber attacks in real time. So which one should you choose? I was asked this question last week during a career mentorship call with Shane, who's a 31-year-old account content in the US. He finished his Google cybersecurity cert and was following my ethical hacker roadmap. His main concern was that is it better to be a cyber analyst first before you try and become an ethical hacker? But not only that, he also had other concerns and with his permission I decided to share those concerns in this video because I know a lot of you have these concerns especially if you're trying to land your first cyber security job. So here's the video breakdown. These issues are really important because they will not only help you with making the right decision but it's also extremely important to be very clear on these issues because when things get stressful and you start doubting yourself and start to question whether it's even worth it this video will bring clarity to your mind and it will help you keep going in your journey let's get into it so Shane passed his Google cyber security certificate in two months which is quite impressive but then as he continued with my ethical hacker roadmap naturally things started to get harder as he started to do more practical projects and he progressed into more intermediate level certifications, self-doubt and imposter syndrome started to creep in. So naturally, he started to question his decision and started to wonder if it's even worth it to become an ethical hacker. So he went into a rabbit hole of Googling, but somehow he found people on the internet who says that cyber analysts earn more money than ethical hacker and therefore it's not worth it to be an ethical hacker. So he wanted to know from the get-go which one pays more, a cyber analyst or an ethical hacker. So to answer this, there are two factors that influence pay in cybersecurity. The first factor is seniority. Seniority doesn't mean age, but it also doesn't mean how long you spend in a company. Seniority means how much knowledge you have acquired over the years, how many projects have you delivered, how much impact have you made, and how much time have you spent in the industry progressing in your career. All of these factors contribute to seniority. Now I want to emphasize that time in the industry doesn't always mean seniority. I personally know someone who has been working in a security operation center at a cyber analyst but all he does is analyze phishing attacks which are extremely straightforward for him so he has been doing the exact same thing over and over for seven years he hasn't learned anything in the last seven years so to me this is not seniority seniority means taking on more responsibilities doing more projects and moving upwards in your career the second factor is the organization itself so naturally if you work somewhere like Google or Microsoft you will be paid a lot more money than if you worked in a non-for-profit organization or a small accounting firm so this is an important factor that people tend to neglect now having said all of that which one pays more honestly they both have the potential to get paid a lot more money I can't make a blanket statement and say cyber analyst gets paid more or an ethical hacker gets paid more I've seen examples of both cyber analysts and ethical hacker getting paid a lot of money but as I said it comes down to seniority and the opportunity you get and the type of organization that you work at but before I continue there is another misconception about salary that I've seen people talk about, especially people who haven't been in the industry long enough. There is an underlying assumption that you have to become a manager to earn a lot of money. This is not true. I've been in organizations and I've even been a manager myself where some of my team members were paid more than me. So you can be a technical individual who have a lot of technical expertise and you can potentially get paid more than the manager. Usually they have titles like distinguished engineer or a principal analyst. So there are avenues to stay technical and make a lot of money you absolutely don't need to be a manager but before we continue a word from our sponsor edX who have educational experiences that drive real and professional progress have you ever wanted to learn at an Ivy League University Harvard University have their introduction to cybersecurity course available on edX and you can register for the course for free you can pay and get a verified certificate from Harvard edX was founded by Harvard and MIT as an experiment to make the world world's best education available to everyone. I've personally used edX and I've gained valuable knowledge. I recommend the introduction to cybersecurity to anyone who wants to learn more about cybersecurity and is not sure where to start. edX has over 4,300 courses from the top universities in the world, plus 250 content partners. 
you can even do an entire master's degree in cybersecurity on edX. But you can also select certain topics such as fundamentals of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which as a Unix guy, I highly recommend. There are also courses from Google, IBM and Oracle. And you can even learn some specific niche skills such as digital forensics with a course offered by RIT University. The advantage of these courses is that you get graded assignments and exams. And if you pass, you will get a verified certificate that you can share on your CV and on your LinkedIn profile. Once you complete the course and obtain a certificate, navigate to the education section on LinkedIn and add the course to your education field or boost your career by adding an Ivy League university to your LinkedIn profile or add your achievement into the education section on LinkedIn. But best of all, use my promo code edX15 Unix guy at checkout for edX.org which is valid until 15 December 2023 and get a 15% discount on these courses to receive the verified certificate and all the graded assignments and graded exams. And back to the video. Now the other big concern that Shane has is whether ethical hacking was a beginner friendly role. And this is a very valid concern, especially as Shane started to do intermediate level certifications, things have naturally got a little bit more difficult. So he wanted to know if perhaps being a cyber analyst is a little bit more beginner friendly to start with. Now to be completely fair, I agree with Shane on this one. In the blue team side of the fence, there are more beginner friendly roles out there than there are for an ethical hacker. But, and this is something that a lot of beginners get wrong about cybersecurity, is as you're learning to become an ethical hacker, you are picking up so many cybersecurity skills that can qualify you to do a lot of entry-level cyber analyst type roles. This is really important. Just because you did an ethical hacking certification doesn't mean that those skills are not transferable to a whole lot of cybersecurity jobs. So what this means for Shane is that I told him to continue studying to become an ethical hacker because this is his passion and therefore he's more likely to spend time and effort into becoming certified and doing all of these hands-on practical labs but when he conduct a job search he shouldn't restrict himself to just ethical hacking job the goal for someone who's trying to land their first cyber security role is to get their foot in the door when he does a job search is to just type the word cyber and apply to all the jobs that are asking for cyber security roles even if that role is not necessarily ethical hacker. This way, he might be able to land an entry-level cybersecurity job and continue to study to become an ethical hacker. So later on, he can change this specialization. It's a lot easier to change your specialization in cybersecurity later than it is to land your very first cybersecurity job. So trust me on this one, don't get hung up on the specialization. As Shane was doing his research, which is Googling what people on the internet say about cybersecurity, he read about burnout in cybersecurity and how people are stressed out in cybersecurity so he wanted to know which specialization was more stressful was it the ethical hacker or the cyber analyst now to be honest with you this is a difficult question to answer i remember when i worked in a cyber security operation center i was part of a team and we were cyber analysts in there there was one individual in that team who was constantly stressed out he was constantly angry he took frequent smoking breaks and he always looked sleep deprived and tired so if you went and asked him if the job is stressful he would definitely tell you that this is the most stressful job in the world. But if you ask me or ask any other team member, they would have told you that it's not very stressful. In fact, the stress was extremely manageable in that environment. Hi, kids. Yay. Have you ever seen a foot with four toes? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, no. Stop it. Stop it. Really Just, no, 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 no. Would you cut it out? What? What is your problem? The hair no, no, no. We're not going to see. We're not going to see the four-toed creed. So there is an individual aspect to stress. Someone might feel stressed out in a situation, while someone else might find that situation easier to manage. But if I was to compare ethical hacking to a cyber analyst role to try to see which one is more stressful, the truth is it's not so much the specialization, but I found the organization itself makes a difference. Some organizations and some managers don't know how to manage the team, so things can get stressful for no reason while other organizations are well managed and well resourced so much so that some cyber security professionals are bored because there is not much to do. So it really depends on the organization but more so it depends on your direct supervisor or direct manager. He also wanted to know which job can be done remotely because remote work was important to him and I hate to disappoint but again they are both kind of similar in terms of remote work opportunities. I found that depends on the organization. Some organization allows 100% 
full remote work while others will want you to be in the office every day but there are also organizations who do the hybrid work model where you need to go to the office for two or three days a week and you can do the rest from home in my opinion if you're trying to land your first cybersecurity job i think you might benefit from going to the office to meet people and learn from individuals who have more experience than yourself but having said all of that there is definitely 100 percent remote work opportunities for both ethical hackers and cyber analysts now the most important question that shane asked me that i actually needed to think about for a little bit was that can you do both can you be a cyber analyst and an ethical hacker and if you think about it if you can do cyber analyst and ethical hacker you would be a really good professional because you will know how to hack into organizations and you will know how to protect against hacking now to be honest with you i've changed my mind about this in recent years in the past i used to think that you can only do one thing and you need to be absolutely doing this thing during your day job for example i thought to be an ethical hacker you have to be working full-time as a penetration tester and that was a very narrow-minded way of thinking in fact this is one of my career regrets that i've talked about in this video but in recent time i've learned that you can in fact combine both skills it's very unlikely that you will be hired to perform both jobs at the same time chances are you will be either on the defensive side or the offensive side but that doesn't mean that after work or during downtime that you can't upskill and study for something that you're passionate about or something that you want to learn more about in fact i highly recommend you do so this is how i stood out in my career because i kept studying and upskilling in spite of what i was doing in my day-to-day -day job so for example if you land a cyber analyst job there is no reason why you can't continue to do penetration testing certifications and training in fact this will make you a much better cyber analyst now it's absolutely normal to be uncertain on which specialization to choose this is perfectly fine and it's even expected but what i recommend you do is that you pick one of the roadmaps that i put out whether it's for cyber analyst or ethical hacker and stick with it for at least 6 to 12 months and see what happens this is the roadmap where i talk about how to become a cyber analyst in detail and this is the roadmap where i talk about how to become an ethical hacker starting from zero all the way to an expert and i'll see you there